Yo, this one just remind me of the Division Pros, but I want to look at them shoes. Why the fuck is my shoe on the top of It's just like a band, yo. Chat, we all bottle shoes. And upgrade you to a new Samsung. This is the Apple Vision Pro, Apple's newest and arguably the most unique device it's ever created. I've been using it for around 24 hours. Here are five important things that you need to know. Okay, first, let's talk about design and form factor of the Apple Vision Pro. As soon as you take this thing out of the box, it's presented in a way that showcases the Vision Pro like it's something that's part of a museum. It even comes with a very Apple instruction manual that, I'm not even joking, looks and feels like a high-end magazine. Inside the box, you have a backup light seal cushion. One comes pre-installed on the Vision Pro themselves, so this is an extra. You get a really soft and branded polishing cloth to wipe off any smudges or fingerprints on the glass. The Vision Pro also comes pre-installed with the solo knit band attached, but it also comes with a dual loop band that should provide for better comfort, especially for longer viewing sessions. There's also a 30 watt USB-C power brick in the box and a nice braided USB-C well, charging when they make cable, them big and ass of brick course, ass the chargers, portable bro. battery unit itself that connects and powers the Vision Pro. Now, I wrote that shit. With my MacBook, man. But I got one of them. Like, I don't, I don't remember which bag I got. I got like the fucking. But I don't know at the top of my head. But that brick, bro. When I put it in the wall, bro, that shit should be falling out. Nigga. Out the gate, Heavy I do have some concerns brick, around the way this battery pack is designed. Number one, it's a wired connection. I would have much preferred something like a USB type C connection that's detachable. Over time, if the cable on this thing starts to fray and gets damaged, you're pretty much toast as the Vision Pro won't be able to power on without it. Also, the proprietary connector here that connects to the Vision Pro, you have to put it in in a very specific way and it actually locks in. And look, I get why Apple probably did this, but- Oh, no shit. I don't know, bro. A band, bro. So a fucking V on it. Yeah, worth it, bro. I was hoping for something yeah, like a worth MagSafe it. connection, mainly because once everything is in, if someone accidentally gets in the way of this cable while you're moving around or something, it's very likely that something is going to break. Now, when it comes to the Vision Pro itself, as to be expected, it's a super well put together, high quality device, premium through and through. The seal that connects to the main unit connects magnetically, as well as the seal cushion itself, which is great, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you are careful not to pick up the Vision Pro in this area because it's heavy enough to wear the magnetic. Yo, if it came with the, like, they should have bought it with this shit, bro, watch. I don't know what I'm talking about. VR. This shit, bro. That shit on the bottom, bro. You gotta have that shit with it, bro. Where you're just like connected, bro, and you could just like run in place. I think. Stances you'll use in your boxing workouts. Bro, that's not it, bro. Bro, it's a video, bro. Like, bro, the nigga. He got the VR headset on, and then he got, like, some shit connected to his body to where he can just, like, stand still, bro. He's standing inside this, like, little figure, bro. And, like, the nigga can, like, run, like, shoot, punch, and shit. And with the v bro, it's tough. If it came with that... Maybe it'd be The connection again. could detach, and trust me, you're not gonna want to drop this thing. Putting on the Vision Pro is easy to do. The solo knit band has this adjustable knob on the side that you use to tighten and loosen your fit as needed and it works really well. Now, two important things that you need to know about the fit. Number one, if you ordered online, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do a fit check at the Apple Store before you take the Vision Pro home. When you order online, you use your iPhone's Face ID sensors to determine which size is gonna be the right for you. And Apple told me that there are over 26 different size variations. And when I went to go pick up mine, the initial size that I was matched to wasn't good. The Apple staff has an entire fit check process and they were able to get me fitted properly with a different seal. So make sure to do a fit check before before you take this bad boy home. Next thing that you need to know is about the weight ah, of the yeah. Make sure the entire fit check so process and though. they were able to get me fitted properly with a different seal. So make sure to do a fit check before. Like their concept is so raw, bro. Like that just look futuristic as hell, bro. Before you take this bad boy home. You know this nigga watching all the fucking hentai porn on this shit, bro. 
Next thing that you need to know is about the weight of the Apple Vision Pro and how it impacts the comfort of having this essentially on your face for extended periods of time. And look, I'm just gonna come on and say it, yeah. It's heavy. And more than the actual weight, the challenge with the Vision Pro is the weight distribution. 98% of the weight is lopsided on the front of the device, so it can start to cause some Here's one thing you need to do before you buy anything online. Don't spend another dime on Amazon until you watch discomfort around the seal and your neck after extended periods of time. Now, I didn't get a chance to use the dual loop band yet, but this should help distribute the weight of the Vision Pro more evenly around your head, making for a more comfortable user experience. Now, at this point, I wouldn't say the weight is enough to make it a deal breaker, but it is something that I'm gonna carefully monitor over time the more and more I use the Vision Pro. And real quick, if you're finding this video helpful, can you do me a favor and press the thumbs up button? It really does help me out. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please consider doing so. Okay, next, I want to talk about what to me has been the most gold off my part about the Vision City. Pro, and it might sound a bit odd, but the eye tracking and gesture Man, control of Vision OS is Man, pretty incredible. When you first boot up the Vision Pro, <laughs> you walk through that. a very immersive setup process, mm. part of which is an exercise in which you're asked to look at particular dots that come up on the display and pinch when you see them. It takes less than a minute to get through the whole setup, and I was a bit nervous that such a short process would lend itself to an easy UI navigation experience experience, but man, I was off zooming around Vision OS comfortably almost immediately. I don't know how many sensors Apple put inside the lenses, but the eye tracking is so accurate, it's almost scary. Even when I'm looking at a web page that has a ton of links jammed next to each other, the Vision Pro is able to laser pinpoint exactly what I want to select with me just very Yo, bro, I think it's really hard for you to explore, but shit here's some things. It, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie, you ain't show me nothing cool, my nigga. You ain't show me shit, man. I actually love this thing. I love this thing. Not because it's flawless or anything. It is far from flawless. But because it's actually interesting. Like, don't forget, the last two, three years of Apple product review comments are just, uh, that boring. Oh, it's just a spec bump. There's nothing really new here. Oh, they hardly change anything or try anything new these days. But this? No, nigga. Every phone, like everybody and their mama know that every phone from like fucking the X to the fucking 15 is the exact same, nigga. Nigga, ever since like, nigga, the button was gone, then they get into the straight just face ID. Nigga, everything has been the same. Nigga. This thing is interesting. It's risky. It be like and most of all, it's new. Now, on it's actually not fundamentally phone, new. It's a VR headset, right, nigga, you will get but it's new for damn. Apple. And there are a bunch of things in what here emoji, that are what? new in a way that only Apple would try. And Y'all just as shit? interesting as this individual product. <laughs> Emojis, bro. And like talking with this shit, recording this shit. Like, nigga. <laughs> Alright, point five. Nigga, that's golden. I ain't gonna lie. I be fucking with the point five. That shit was just meant for me. Other than that, bro, it don't be shit, nigga. Is the possible future that this implies. Like, when you get a first generation product like this, you sort of automatically assume that there are goals for its future. Yo, like, that show it, me and also that's screen record coded, with developer dude, mode man. on purpose because I have noticed from its headset, you don't even really think about it that good good. that I really don't experience any eye fatigue no matter how long I am in this pass-through mode. Despite my eyes being inches from these screens, I can interact with the real world around me, pick things up and look at them. I can walk around between rooms and not trip on things. I tried having people throw the things fuck at is me the point and I could just catch them. I played table tennis. Nigga, is this VR in his real life? Like, nigga. Successfully with the headset on, which is crazy if you think about what's actually happening here. The total latency, Apple says, is 12 milliseconds. That's from the outside light hitting the outside sensors to the inside image being updated and hitting your eyeballs. That's incredibly fast. That's, and that includes the exposure time of the cameras. That's the specially designed R1 chip at work. But as Neil from The Verge has put it, it's still cameras and screens. Like the technology of today isn't magic. So you still have to expose a camera sensor and set ISO and shutter speed, so etc. And you can like kind of play around with our regular life is virtual reality and that we're in a different world, money. This shit is a waste of X, shit, Y, and Z bro. space when you're in much lower lighting as opposed to the usual perfect position. Again, it's the best I've ever seen with today's tech. 
but it definitely still has a long way to go. Intel decided to spoil me and send me the brand new butters. Intel Corp. Oh, what's up? Hey, what y'all know about butters, nigga? She was like that in like Black Ops 4. I was watching good content, nigga. She wasn't like the top, like, nigga, skill wise, nigga. I'm talking about just like content wise, nigga. She was valid. Cameras on the front of the headset to the positional tracking and responsiveness of the spatial audio. It's niggas is on FaceTime. All so well thought out. I was wondering how that shit works, bro. Cause like, bro, the VR is literally on your head, bro. How can you get a camera on your face if the shit is sitting on your eyes? And they don't even have the image of the, the VR on their head if they're using it or not. I don't know. But you feel me? Like, how does that work, bro? That, you know, once everyone on the call gets past Look, the- Look, this nigga, the whole VR on, nigga. On all, like, nigga, these niggas in this technology shit, bro. The initial, like, uh, what is this? The these shock, weird, the moment bro. they first see the virtual version of you. Once they first, like, they probably just, like, nigga, just scanned this nigga whole face. All right. He just threw it in the system, nigga, and then just created his whole new image, like. To get past threw that, it up on the, then it actually kind of slowly thing. gets easier, and it feels way more like a normal conversation than a normal FaceTime. And it trades the downside of not being able to Look, nigga, she has this shit on her face. What the fuck is recording? Like, you see how the image look, bruh? There's supposed to be a camera facing her like how it is right now with the VR. But the VR is on her on her face, on her eyes. Hold up objects to your camera for a button that can switch to a real-time first-person view where you can use both hands. These niggas cheating, bro. <laughs> these niggas Instead of cheating, one. Bro. Does the audio from these speakers still bleed out into the rest of the world so anything over half volume is incredibly audible? You and then you can open up computer? simultaneous Vision Pro apps all around that Mac display and place them all around the room wherever you want. Over the walls, oh, nah, floating in midair. That's so fucking tough. Pin them to other objects, whatever. You can go nuts. Now, is this perfect? No. There are definitely trade offs from even the little Bro. things like not being able to see your key. All you need though is that, that, that like, I don't know if this shit's wireless. Like, nigga, what do you have to do? Connect your shit to your phone? Is there a wire running? Uh, you know, look, okay, that shit look Bluetooth. <laughs> nigga, just take the whole headset away and then just like, implant like the chip of that device into my head to where you don't have to wear the headset boom it's worth it because bro with the headset on you just look dumb man like you're just like a no life nerd bro you're not gonna get no bitch but i'm telling you but they just gonna look at you like bro get a life bro you probably just sit in the house all day on that shit don't never get a girlfriend from even um, the little things like not being able to see your keyboard when you're in an immersive environment to only being able to have a single virtual Mac monitor at a time VR movie? to old yeah, I watched this shit like I ain't watched the whole thing but it's like this movie bro I don't remember what it's called uh, this shit right here it was type type cool bro like bro everybody in the world had the vr on bro it was like bro dude shit was doomed nigga but like like when you ended shit man the games that they was playing like bro it's so bad like it's like cool as hell like you can understand why the niggas doing that but like nigga the population and all that shit bro it was over with but it was trash everywhere like bro the building, the houses, all that, bro, it was just polluted. Like, nigga, shit was terrible. Always having to look where you're controlling. I keep telling you guys, there's definitely extra brain cycles involved here. But I do still think that despite all that, this is this is my number one favorite feature of this Vision Pro. The number one thing that you can buy it for and do that you couldn't do with any other Apple product.
I mean, it's the difference between looking like this in a coffee shop or looking like this in a coffee shop. Pick your poison, I guess. I also had a moment where I was using the Vision Pro for a while and I had my Mac and some other monitors around me and then I also shop or looking like this in a coffee shop. Nigga. <laughs> yeah. Which one y'all kind of like? Yeah. I mean, they don't look that, they don't look that bad, but it's just like still, no, bro. Nah, bro. Y'all niggas look retarded, bro. <laughs> This nigga just chilling, bro. He probably get that nigga get money, nigga. Pick your poison, I guess. I also had a moment where I was using the Vision Pro for a while, and I had my Mac and some other monitors around me, and then I took it off, and then I went and did something, and then I came back, and before I put the headset back on, I looked up at the wall to where I thought a window was gonna be, but I hadn't, I hadn't, I don't know if that says more about the headset, or about me. The rest of the developers are also kind of still trying to figure out what to do with the 3D space in their own apps. Use it. Or maybe you've seen that other video of watching an F1 race in Vision Pro. It is so sick. It's like there's a virtual track overlaid into your space so you can keep track of everything happening at once, plus the times and you know smaller video feeds of the battles around different points of the track. Also, same with the watch. Same with the iPad, but here's the yeah, thing: you can't just lie, that shit is not. It's not worth it, man. <laughs> Driving a Tesla Cybertruck. Everything you need to know. The niggas even get that right, shit. All right, so bro? the Tesla Cybertruck has been kind of an enigma. It was revealed four years ago, Literally. almost to the day, and ever since then it was kind of quiet. But then we slowly started seeing them rolling around like California a little bit and then a couple in Texas. And these are like prototype cyber Cybertrucks and they were testing. Turns out one of them was me. Well, for a day anyway. So what we have here is a near final Tesla Cybertruck. Uh, it's not a, an actual delivery truck yet. It's still one that they've been testing. So there's some small, oh, small prototype things here or there. But everything that I'm about to show you is what's going the to- The wheels are just dirt, man. Like the rim, bro, that bit, that's dirt. I know this is like bulletproof, like bro, this motherfucker look like he'd get up and walk by his damn self. Like this transformer ass car. Show up in the customer's delivery trucks starting basically right now. So uh, I've learned a lot about this truck in my time testing it. There are some surprising things about it, some features that are really cool, it's things that I think truck people are really gonna like, but also some concerns that I have, some surprises. Buckle up, this is gonna be a mega video. Get subscribed, there's a lot to it. Let's take a look at the final Tesla Cybertruck. Look, the bullet doesn't see Bullets in that motherfucker. All right, first things first, let's get to the specs. Everyone wants to know the official well, number. It's probably just a regular Tesla car with the, all the Tesla features in here, but just truck-wise, feel me, and bulletproof and shit, man. Like, y'all niggas took that long just to do There's all that. Watch. Everything on paper. And it's funny because we'll get to this in a second, but some things have actually changed from the show truck that showed up on stage, including the overall dimensions. I'll get to that. But the stuff that you probably care about is the basics like price, range, speed, right? So there are gonna be three configurations of the Cybertruck. This one that we're looking at here, which you can't tell by looking at it, but this is the triple motor version. It's not quite the same as the Plaid powertrain, but it is. How much y'all think it is? It's probably like two mil. If it ain't two mil, bro, y'all niggas is tripping, bro. Cause this bitch, bro, it look like it cost. Bro, if it's like 300K, Bro, like 750, like seven should be like the lowest, 700,000. Nigga, anything other than that, bro, y'all tripping, bro. Like Elon, nigga, you know you. Two in the rear, one in the front, and uh, it's gonna be able to do zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds, an 11 second quarter mile, it's got about 845 horsepower. It has torque vectoring at the rear. Then again, it's not like a fucking Bugatti or nothing. 
and uh, it's absurd. They call it the Beast. Uh, it's it's a pretty ridiculous set of specs. I think that makes it the fastest production pickup truck factory ever. But there's also going to be a dual motor version that they also start to ship early, and eventually also a single motor rear wheel drive version. The triple motor is going to start at about $100,000. So this is new information. We kind of had a much lower idea of what the price was going to be at launch. This is a $100,000 truck you're looking at. Expect somewhere around mm. 75, 85,000 for the dual motor version, and then the single motor will be further down the road. But the dual motor is still 600 plus horsepower and still plenty fast. But that's the general basics. 845 horsepower, my nigga. Like, come on, bro. A truck with 845 horsepower. The bitch is bulletproof. It looked tough as hell. All right. Two mil, probably two damn high. It's not GTA, my nigga. But, like, damn, bro. That and as far as range, we'll get to the wheels in a second. But it's about a 340 mile max range from the absolute most efficient version of this truck. Now, a couple other last numbers things that I think some truck people will appreciate. First of all, uh, towing capacity and bed capacity. Those are some things that Tesla's told me. I'm going to put the numbers up here. I think it's 2,500 pounds for the bed which is pretty cool. And uh, we also measured the truck because officially it's about 5% smaller in every dimension from the original show truck, the prototype that people have been seeing on stage. So I measured it from front to back I really don't know of the, some of these car. pieces here, how sharp it is. Not that you're gonna like walk up and poke the front of someone's truck very often, but that's a sharp corner piece of stainless steel right there and right there. And then this, this front piece here, it's this one huge, big stamped piece. And I had a couple conversations with people, engineers at Tesla, about using stainless steel on the body panels like this. And they have these huge presses that are stamping the stainless steel, but steel has this sort of a spring back effect. So you use a lot of force to stamp it in place, but then it springs back really quickly. So you have to stamp further than you need to get it to unspring back to the part that you want it to be at. It's a whole complicated thing. All of that is to say, I've seen a bunch of cyber trucks while I've been here and they all have slightly different levels of uh, panel here. gaps, build quality in general. This truck in particular that we're looking at, it actually it looks great. I'm not gonna say it's micron levels of precision or anything like that, but generally, oh, it kinda, it looks like a dump truck to me, but one thing you should know is, first of all, a dampened opening for the tailgate, but it's not a power opening tailgate, well, we so you will have like to manually truck. close the thing. I thought it was a nice like soft an And then the other side first is out, the powered tonneau cover. Oh, wait. I should do the thing. They told me it could support okay, so two mil up to 300 pounds. Me, so. Yo, this bitch hard. They told me I could do it, so here we are. I'm not going to jump, but I'm told 300 pounds of force from somebody standing on one foot. So I think if I jumped, I could probably break the thing. But the fact that I'm standing on it and it's not breaking, that's pretty good. And it's a motorized tonneau cover, which means... Pretty smooth, I gotta say. Now, once you're here, there's a bunch of stuff I gotta talk about with this trunk. First things first, you probably noticed it slid down and revealed a rear Yo, window, uh, which means number one, yes, there's a rear window. It doesn't go up and down, but at least you have that glass there. And two, watermelon. yes, that means that when you close the tonneau cover, you are completely blocking your rear visibility. These we'll get to that later. To make <laughs> so truck the other thing you probably noticed Tesla, is when we first saw the tri cyber truck, I did a video about this on the autofocus tough, channel. Maybe. The bed was just like bare stainless steel. It looked kind of sick. It looked crazy. Uh, but you'll notice now it is fully lined. Tesla said they took it out and talked to some construction people about it and were like, all right, what do you think of this truck? What do you think of the bed? And they were like, this is awesome, but the first thing I would do is spray line this so I could not damage it. So I just figured they would line it themselves. Nice thick lining here. Um, the bed size. The official length of the bed for the F-150, the Lightning got over there, was 66 inches on paper. Now when I uh, line this up here, I get all the way to 72 inches, so it's a solid six foot bed. Uh, but there's a little bit of overhang over here, so if I subtract a little bit to account for that, it's about the same, 66 inches. And there's a little bit of a sub trunk, which is pretty cool to see. So a lot of EVs now have a sort of a sub. 
pop my motherfucking Drake right there. Feel me? 12 put me over, nigga. That motherfucker right there. Up trunk area. This one, no different. You can yeah, definitely you fit know. duffel bag in there. Probably like the track clock, nigga. The back seat of the track clock, nigga, where you hide the little kid. My gym five, nigga. Be a full carry on bag. <laughs> And there is a drain plug, so if you want to make a cooler out of it, tailgate is a pretty good vehicle to do that. Stack a bunch there's of also <laughs> some bed lighting. You can see on the left and right, there's lots of lights, and there's also this uh, sort of a latch system, so all sorts of latch points where you can tie things down with cables. What you're probably noticing, though, is there's no spare tire, no spare wheel. If you do want one, you can buy one separately and tie it up in the trunk, but you don't get one by default. And then the other thing is, there's power in the trunk. So 220 volts here, and one 240 volt. If you wanna charge a vehicle with a nine kilowatts out, you can use literally the thing you'd plug into a dryer outlet. You can plug that in here, plug it into a vehicle, and give battery to another EV. So just in general, what I'm glad fuck? that more EVs are doing this, having the ability to power other things and actually charge you could actually theoretically power your house with this if you had the right inverter. Uh, but 11 kilowatts out of the charge port, 9.6 kilowatts out of the 240 volt onboard, all great stuff to have. Uh, I should also mention, small detail, bottle cap opener over there, and then some more uh, dropping points that. for cables yeah, and things like that. That's the truck bed of the Cybertruck. There's uh, some lights that we'll talk about in a second, but let's close the tonneau cover. 1955, that shit was not easy to come across. <laughs> Had dot. Oh, something I just noticed. If Tweak you out, nigga. press the button, it does the whole thing. Or, if you hold the button, it goes until you let go. That's a lie. <laughs> it was doing that up until that point. See? Wait. Okay, this is weird. It didn't do it that time. But it seems like if I hold it down, whenever I let go, it stops. And if I just press it, it goes all the way until I cancel it, which it doesn't want to cancel over there. Okay, I'm learning in real time. Close the whole thing. Tell me when to cancel. No. I knew it. All right, we got to talk about these doors because there's actually a lot to Where it. Where the so, fuck is the knob? First of all, a lot of times on a concept car or, or a prototype, you'll see there's no door handles and you're like, oh, that's cute. But when you ship the thing, you're going to have door handles eventually. No door handles on the Cybertruck and they're sticking to it. I have my concerns about this. So basically how this works is there's a little button right here that's indented. You press that button and when it's unlocked, it sort of pushes it out maybe two inches. Then you grab in here and open the whole door. And then you close it. The auto presented windows, they all close themselves up here. They're frameless windows. That's cool. It works. Same thing actually back here. Smaller button, you press it. It opens it and it works. And this is actually a full 90 degree door. I love that there's like stainless steel in here. It's very clearly all metal. It's got a nice thunk to it too. But what I've noticed, and this is something you'd already be thinking of if you live in the Northeast or something, is if it's cold or if it's raining or if it's frozen, if there's like an inch of ice over here, is this gonna work? Tesla's telling me, and this is a, this is a California company that tells me these things, but they're telling me up to an inch of ice if you can break through that ice and press this button, it'll push with enough force to open it and break the ice off. I hope that's true. It's that's cat. debatable, we'll see. But the other thing about that is, I think a lot of people are going to open it down here on the stainless steel, and you can see the fingerprints go so hard when you open it like that. And because there's no door handles, there's not really a good way of telling someone how to get in. So a lot of people are just gonna grab it right there and fingerprint, look at, it's just tons of fingerprints on the man. side here. So, I don't know. There's gonna be a lot of Cybertrucks floating around with lots of fingerprints around the place that people's hands go to open the doors. All right, front of the truck here, couple things that are of note. First of all, if we go down low, this plastic bumper, pretty solid, but also there's two tow hitch rigs on the front, which is oh, awesome. I want a ram, man. Like, bro, these shits are so tough. 
Nigga, not this bullshit. Bitch. Like this bitch right here. My boss got one of these motherfuckers. Like, nigga, put some bigger ass fucking. Like, damn, dog. Some bigger ass wheels, man. Shit, nice. Look at this shit. Imagine Marcus hopping out that motherfucker. Like, if it look like this, that shit, yeah, that's ugly, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It's ugly as shit. When they got the rim on it, it look better than me. Yeah. That motherfucker's so cold. <laughs> I'm gonna get that shit. Try, 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 Anyway, I would have those. I would definitely still get them bitches, but I would have them just like on the side. And this shit too. Like this shit just be on the side. I'm gonna have like in my lifetime. I'm gonna have like forty cars. So even there is a front camera for the first time ever in a Tesla. Believe it or not, it's useful on a truck like this where you can't actually see over the front. Then you have this huge daytime running light, but also the headlights, the actual headlights are just these slots down here. I'll show some night, you'll see some night driving footage, so you'll see what the headlights look like. But then the thing everybody's been asking about, and I've seen mostly on Twitter is, cool. is there actually a front trunk in here? If so, how big is it? Yes, there's a front trunk, and it's automatically opening, so what you just reach in and push the button the in like that. And uh, it's a pretty shallow front trunk, I gotta say. This that is also the part where I feel nice. compelled to mention that I haven't seen a single Tesla logo yet on this entire truck. It's mostly branded with Cybertruck in this kind of a welded text, <laughs> which is kind of cool. But it's a pretty shallow front trunk. I mean, I can sit in here and you're probably seeing I'm much too shaded right now, so it's kind of tough to understand how big it is, but it's only maybe the size of two of these Ridge suitcases. So I'm gonna put two Ridge carry-ons in the front of this thing. See if I can actually fit both. I mean, with the back, maybe you got Because this is basically the exact stuff. size you'd want for like an airplane overhead if you actually had to travel with stuff in the front trunk. Bro, what is the engine like behind this? Is like right here, hindered me. Like, everything just gotta be at the bottom, bro. Like, nigga, how you pop the hood and like looking at motherfuckers? Like, change the battery, change the Could you fit it? Oh. There is no motherfucking oil change. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking like you're going to do oil change. <laughs> Not quite. It's really close. I think maybe you might have to do some or Jenga. Look at this. Just to to turn them down. As long as they're behind this seal, I think I'm good. Take two. Weak ass drunk. Okay. So that's basically your exact limit is two Ridge carry-ons. Shout out to Ridge for sponsoring this video. So these Ridge carry-ons, which are in these nice colors, hey, they also have a third- They did not sponsor this video, so fuck percent <laughs> thicker shell than a standard carry-on while staying lightweight, some nice carbon fiber accents, a durable that and grippy video, handle, not this video. and they're weatherproof. So wherever you go, if it's no raining, promo, you're good. And if you want a matching Ridge wallet, it literally comes in the Cut same color. So you've got Royal Spot Black, Alpine Navy, Base Camp Orange, oh, and Matt Olive. And shout out to Ridge for offering a 99. This is the only curve in the entire interior. Cut that is train, this steering wheel. <laughs> and yes, it's a wheel. It's not a yoke. I'm pretty sure when they first showed the car, one of the big things they showed was it had a yoke and it had this crazy like marble shelf at the front. 
Now it's looking a lot more uh, normal car like, but there's still a lot to go over. So first of all, this glass. Bro, this, this glass is a trunk. I mean, a truck SUV mixed together, bro. Like this shit's so tough. Like it's so tough. I will get this bit if I was rich. Shit. My head is the single largest piece of glass in the entire it's automotive like industry. Like if you tried to order a piece of glass this big for your house, it would be a big piece of glass. But it's it the biggest ugly, windshield it we've ever seen. Cold at the same time. And it kind of is is this nice dramatic canopy when you're just like looking around and visibility in the truck is very good. Uh, you also have these uh, little removable sunshades that are actually pretty big and there's this nice, look at this magnetic connector up top to get that in place. So that's cool and everything. But aside from that, no other curves. Lots of straight angles and triangles and things like that. A good amount of door storage. So I think you could fit probably two water bottles in there. There's some, some tray storage up here. Then you get up to here and there's all four window controls the door latch to electronically open it, but also the emergency door latch open. So if you lose power, every door that's electronically latched has to have that manual opening as well. And then in the middle, you've got just kind of a bunch of open space. I kind of like the pedals down there. I think they're metal, but then you have just this big open tray space, which I believe the Rivian also has. And then in front, two wireless chargers, two cup holders, a big old armrest in the middle and a bunch of storage in here, including another 120 volt outlet and a single 65 watt USB-C charging port. And then you're, uh, you're sort of in the cabin. And this is where I think you kind of return to the normal Tesla look, which is very minimal. I do like this material better than what they had before though. It's not the best build in the world. Tesla's been improving with their build quality, but it is what it is. But you can literally, you can like lose something in front of you. Like if I put like a, like a marble or a pizza box or something, it, it could slide forward. Of course I could accelerate and get it back, but there's just a ton of room. And then I'm thinking about visibility over the nose of the car. Man, it's not great. I feel like the more I drive this car, the more yeah. I get accustomed to the size of it. Um, but I really don't feel like I'm looking right down over the nose. I'm yeah, looking out bro, this shit at the end of, of the windshield and like then sort of guessing where the nose kind of like is. So, okay, a couple of the smaller things. First of all, this uh, light up here, shit touch cons. sensitive. I think that's pretty cool. Like the door handle There's ambient lights all the way around the cabin, and you can change the color of that with RGB with mm, software. Like I'll get to the software in a second. Bro, There's you, also an yeah, interior-facing kind of cabin camera, and there would the normally car. be, this is one of the prototype things, but there would normally be a regular rear-view camera here. Now, as I mentioned, you don't actually get to see out the back from the mirror if your tonneau cover mm, mm, mm. is closed. But there also is no camera option for that, that rear view mirror to turn into a feed from a camera. Instead, that will always be on the screen. And I think I found that that's it's actually fine. You just sort of train yourself to glance at the top of the screen instead of at where the mirror normally is, but that's something to note. And uh, one more thing. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah huge tinted roof over your head all the way back over the passengers heads and a ton of speakers not a single curve to any of the speaker grills but there are speaker grills all over this cabin and they're all either trapezoids or squares okay something i've just realized i i thought that it was required that the only actual physical button you need in your car is the hazards button this truck does not have a hazards button it has a touch sensitive hazards thing but then there's also your park, reverse, neutral, and drive gears, if you actually want to change them, up above your head. Uh, I've never seen it there in any car, ever, the actually, the typically, of the Cybertruck. It's weirder than you think. All right, first of all, I like that the door is open 90 degrees. You get the seat back in front of you. Really good rear leg room, mostly because the seat in front of me is on these cool Cybertruck looking rectangular risers, but that means I have real space to put my feet under the seat in front of me, which is huge for legroom. So either side, totally fine. Middle, not the best legroom ever, but still a totally great back seat. Got another screen back here that I'll show you in a second. There's a little bit of seat back storage, but check this out. There's a little trick to the back seat just for storage. So although you already have a front trunk and a rear trunk, if you want even more covered storage mm -hmm. with this latch right here, mm -hmm. the right seat actually comes completely up 
and you can just well, keep stuff there's down here. There's no person here. Matter of fact, the left two seats come over here. Also do the same thing. I'm gonna get out and pull that latch as well. And then that's just, that's a ton of room for activities. Look at this. Not that that's better than having a seat, but you can put a bunch of boxes back here. Activities. Yeah, look at it. we had your bitch in the motherfucking. Ooh, hey. Yeah. You could put, I don't know. You can just put stuff back here. Also, there's the nine and a half inch screen for the passengers, which is where I discovered you can move the passenger seat, not the driver's seat, on the screen. And these are also heated left and right, not middle, but heated left and right rear seats. They look ventilated, they look cold, but they don't do that. Just uh, just heat. Or you could just like watch a movie. Pretty familiar to any other Tesla, but they have made some key changes that I think uh, I actually like a lot. There's still no stocks. There's still no blinker stocks, still no drive, reverse, all that stuff. But the buttons on the steering wheel are at least now haptic like actual buttons. They're not haptic touch controls where you touch it and it vibrates to simulate a button. No, it actually clicks and moves this time. So that's awesome. So at least that's better. So that's the that's the blinkers on the steering wheel. That's your headlights. That's your giant windshield wiper, which I'll talk about, and your voice controls. You still got your wheels up and down for volume of media and your autopilot controls. And then this sort of a flat squircle, Wait, I guess is what you call up? it. Like a I mean, squared off it, circle type right. thing for the steering wheel. Oh, and then... Uh, it's a real horn this time. There's no like button on the steering wheel horn like in my car. So I really appreciate that. Also again, no Tesla logo on the steering wheel. It's a Cybertruck like trapezoid silhouette type thing. So again, I think the only Tesla logo on the whole car is literally the key, same as every other Tesla. But that brings us of course to the new software. So I think they've done an actually really, really good job with the software in this all new cyber <laughs> UI. Right. So they, if you've used a Tesla before, it's laid out the exact same way, but it's all themed in a very cyber truck way. But there's some new little things that they've done. It's, it's really well thought out. And I still honestly, after using it, I really feel like Tesla has the best software in the car industry. That's not CarPlay and Android Auto. So first of all, you, you start with just this huge cyber truck in the middle for all your vehicle controls. There's little hovering dots, so if you want to open the tailgate or open the tonneau cover, so. you can do that with any of these little hovering buttons. Open the charge port flap, charge, charge port flap, cool. Um, but then all of the rest of the looks about this car, uh, you can adjust in real time. So first of all, ride height. You tap the wheel there. We are at the sort of uh, entry ride height where it squats to be as easy as possible to get into. So you can also go low, <laughs> medium, or high, and it adjusts super fast. There's a pretty awesome 12 inches of suspension travel between the lowest mode and the highest mode. You can go all the way up to 17 uh. inches of clearance in off-road mode. Extract mode is the absolute highest. It'll add another 80 millimeters of clearance, but it'll go a foot down from that. So that's pretty sick. And there are aluminum skid plates slash aero shields at the bottom of the truck. I continue to move around. Uh, if I lower the window, for example, look at the window on the car. Halfway down, halfway down. I go all the way down on this window, all the way down on that window. So that's real time. I get yeah, my I lights in real time. Too. I have uh, so the headlights down here. If it's I even really turn the steering on. wheel, all of that moves in real time. And it's kind of on this like Mars terrain, cyber terrain, whatever you want to call it. I think that's sweet. So you just get a full overview of the car there. You've got your media, your navigation. It's telling me if I need to close my door or fasten my seatbelt. And this is my range indicator up here. 223 miles right now, which if I tap it is 76% battery. Pretty close to what I'm expecting. And then you see your navigation, which basically if you just swipe over, you can fill that right two thirds of the screen with navigation and keep your vehicle controls on the left. And when you're in drive, that looks just like it normally does in a Tesla with other stuff on the road. But now you have all your navigation stuff. You, you always have all your stuff in the dock down at the bottom. Heated steering wheel with two levels. Like a driver or something. Beast. Um, but also like, like a Doug Miro way to start the video, but man, okay. It still doesn't really feel like a real vehicle, but it definitely is. And first impression really is, well, okay. It feels like a Tesla, that's not gonna be a shocker really instant throttle response. This is the triple motor version, it's the beast. Um, 
but also like spacing wise. I'm just looking around, just trying to feel how big this vehicle is. This is a small road, school bus. Uh, I'm able to maneuver around though. I have pretty good visibility everywhere. I'm just thinking a lot about where the nose of the truck is because it is such a short nose. It's a really different, different ratio. I'm not used to the hood being that short compared to where the windshield is, but either way, it's pretty quiet. I will say these laminated windows do a good job of sealing out all the noise. They also happen to be shatterproof. The truck also happens to be allegedly bulletproof. I'm not testing that in this video, but <laughs> you've seen the pictures. So the idea is it's it's really well built. I'm just trying to figure out, all right, this feels nimble, right? The steering is, the weight's not gonna change, so this is the way it always is. Getting used to the steering is really gonna be the number one thing for people they're not going to be used to the entire steering being less than an entire turn. It's a half a turn, 180 degrees. I think it's 170. And it is a pretty big truck, but it's, I feel like it's a tiny bit smaller than the F-150 Lightning. I think they did a good job of giving you as much space as you can. Like this is a spacious cabin, spacious back seats, as I showed you, and a full six foot bed, but it's got the smallest frunk. Nice ass truck, Chad. That's, that's worth it. I'm like them Apple Vision Pros, man. Yo, that shit with Cardi and Aiden, crazy. <laughs> Nigga came for like six minutes and then just got two mil out that shit. Shit, boy, you finna hear it. Okay, about pull out of the chest. I might pull up in. I might pull up in. I might pull up in. Fuck it. We wrapping it up, chat. Yes, 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 sir. Cause the reason I know that she got it, she don't. Hey, hey. Hey, big body, and I'm looking like a top water, bitch. I would have big body that big body is not gonna run. Can't do it so much, need us some peace. Storylines and your good eyes are repeating. Yeah. Yeah. Told you that nigga's not. Yeah, that's over. Then I'll be running that shit in the top off. Seas, nigga. Caught a little dog. I just got back on that one. I'm on PC now. Man, I gotta climb up in the ranks on me. I'm on the cop right now. Catch on, niggas, I'm not catching on, bro.